Hello, how are you all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're going to take a look at this Chevy Silverado with a 5.3 liter engine. This engine has an intermittent misfire occurring, so the first thing we want to do is to scan the onboard system. When we scan it, we see that we have a misfire on P0304, indicating the cylinder 4 is a misfire. When we go to mode 6, we also have 4 indicating that it's been misfiring. So according to the scan tool, our best chance of finding the misfire is on cylinder 4. But we always want to double check the data from the scan tool. So what we want to do is run a misfire off the CKP and confirm that this is our cylinder. So let's go ahead and pop the hood and take a look at what we're going to do. Now that we pop the hood on this Chevy Silverado, it's got a 5.3. It's not missing right now, but when it does miss, we want to confirm the cylinder. So what we ended up doing is we've taken channel 1 and connected it to the CKP wire at the computer, and we've connected the other one to the number 1 ignition coil. We've recorded the data, and this is the data that all of us have been aware of for years and years. This is the crank sensor, and this is the ignition trigger. Now, in this crank sensor data, the crankshaft velocity changes will be in that data. And if the crank slowed down during a misfire and sped up when it's firing, we're going to be able to find that. So what we want to do is go over to the tools, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this test. We're just going to start it, and it's running gathering data. Now we want to test the data, we're going to shut that off and we're going to let the machine process that data to see if we have any misfires currently. So at this time we have no misfires. What we're looking at here is we're looking at this data and as this data is going each one of these pink lines is top dead center. The piston slows down compressing the gas. If the air fuel was fired I accelerate and then I deaccelerate during the next compression. I accelerate, I deaccelerate, I accelerate, I deaccelerate. So none of these are indicative that I have a misfire at this time. What we need to do is to get this car to misfire so we can confirm cylinder four is our misfire. Let's go ahead and see if we can rev this engine and get it to misfire. Many times, when you put dynamic loads on an engine, revving it, I'm changing a lot. Now I can see the check engine light started to misfire. So now let's go check that misfire and see if it's present. Now that we've got the engine misfiring, let's run the misfire software. We'll start the software, we'll let it run. Now we caught the misfire while it's occurring right now. And here we have 10 misfires on cylinder 4 out of 14. So this is definitely number 4 that's misfiring. Now I also hear some noise occurring every now and then, like the DOD lifter has a problem. So let's go ahead and pull the spark plug and let's do a compression test on this to see if we've got a collapsed DOD lifter. We're going to put the compression testing hose into cylinder 4. We're going to go ahead and put a sensor into the intake manifold as well. This will give me my intake poles. Now we're going to put the exhaust probe into the tailpipe. This will give me my exhaust pushes. Now we have our pressure transducers in the cylinder, intake, and in the exhaust. We're going to now start the software that will give us some auto analysis. As we can see right now, this cylinder is saying everything is timed and everything is happening correctly. But the engine's not missing right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise the RPM up of the vehicle and then we're going to watch this waveform to see what happens. So 
So we're going to go ahead and rev this engine. And we can see that we've lost the compression of the motor. We'll pause the data and now we want to analyze it. Now that we've captured the data, this is the, the data where we have idle. We started to open the throttle up, revving the engine, we got compression. But then we have something happen right here until we let off. This is our misfire. So what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to blow this up. Now is what we can clearly see is that the compression pulse is lower than the exhaust. The wider one right up through here is the exhaust. These lower ones are the compression. What's happening is the DOD system is acting activated or the lifter is activating and it's creating a no compression cylinder. That valve is an opening. Since the intake valve is an opening, we have no volume entering the cylinder where we can have compression. This is a DOD failure of this 5.3 engine. This is a wiring diagram for this Chevy Silverado. We can see the pink wire brings source voltage, either battery or charging system, into a pack where I have four solenoids, cylinder four, cylinder two, cylinder one, and cylinder three. I power all these solenoids and then we have a computer control for each one of these solenoids that goes to the microprocessor. It grounds these and it activates them. When they're activated, they're turned on. This allows high volume oil flow to go into the lifter and push a pin out of the lifter. In this case, these lifters operate like a pirate's telescope where they'll go in and out. If it's pinned, it's one component. The lifter then opens the valve. When that pin comes decoupled from the oil pressure, then it does not open and the valves therefore stay closed. This changes the engine from a large displacement to a small di displacement. The less air that's in the engine, the more goes into each cylinder. The more that goes into each cylinder, the higher the compression is, and therefore the greater my efficiency is. That's what DOD does. It's not lessening the amount of air entering the engine, because you still have to have X amount of power to overcome the parasitic loss of the body for aerodynamics, the wheels, the bearings, and all of that has to be overcome. What it does is it lets the same amount of air basically into the motor, but now I'm using only four cylinders for all the air, which gives me a greater compression within each cylinder and makes the engine more efficient. We've checked the wiring diagram for this Chevy Silverado and the green with a black trace wire goes to the oil manifold lifter for number four for the DOD. So what we need to do now is get the data on this engine and we're going to see if that is being commanded on or the lifter is just failing. So let's go ahead and start this vehicle up. This is the trace from this 5.3 Chevy. You can see where we started it and we start to run across in an idle position. We come up, as we open the throttle up, we increase the air into the cylinder and the engine starts to spin faster. More energy is putting into it. And right here we can see where the lifter deactivated or the pin unlocked the two halves of the lifter from each other. Now the lifters are sliding in within one another and this is the area where we're going to have high vacuum. What I want to make a note of is this yellow trace. This is the grounding circuit for the number four cylinder solenoid that activates the DOD lifters. So this never was pulled low by the computer but stays high. 
as we put mechanical energy into the lifter, the lifter is broken so the pin comes loose. When the pin comes loose, it goes into a deactivated mode where the two half, the two pieces of the lifter are no longer locked as one assembly. The pin is free and now the two pieces are interacting as two separate pieces, not one lifter. So the valves are not opening. Since the computer didn't command this low, this was not a computer command is what this is, is a broken lifter. The lifter with high mechanical force can't hold together and it deactivates, the pin comes loose. Then when it goes back to an idle, the pin can hold this lifter again. That's why you always want to rev an engine regardless of what you're looking for with these type of problems. You want to put the mechanical energy because you not only have higher oil pressure, but you have a higher mechanical energy, energy from all of the engine components spinning faster. What this engine is going to need is the heads removed and the lifters replaced in order to fix or repair this vehicle. As you can see, when you use ATS equipment for its power to diagnose vehicles quickly and accurately, you'll win in your service bay. Every day I'm in a war out here fixing cars. You gotta win the battles to win the war. Let ATS help you win.